So today, we're making ribs. And when I think about ribs, I love that Memphis style of ribs. That dry rub on the outside with that tangy vinegar sauce around it. You're gonna be amazed at how easy these ribs are to make. Stick around to find out. All right guys, we're gonna start off by making our rub. So into a bowl, I'm gonna put some paprika, some brown sugar, salt, chili powder, garlic powder, some onion powder, cumin, cayenne pepper, and then finish it off with some freshly ground black pepper. I throw mine in my coffee grinder to grind it up right before using it. And then we're just gonna take a fork and we're gonna mix this together. Now I love making my own rubs, but if you have one that you love, I encourage you guys to use that. So now that that's made, we're gonna move on to prepping our ribs. So here I've got two beautiful slabs of ribs that need a little bit of prep work before we can apply our rub. So if you flip your ribs over, you'll notice that there's a little bit of a membrane on the back of these ribs. It's incredibly slippery and it's very hard to get a grip on. A nice trick I like to do is I use a paper towel so that I get a little bit of grip on there and then I can pull it off in one big swoop. Normally you can ask your butcher to do this for you, but I always prefer doing a little bit of the work myself. So once we have that membrane off, we're going to hit it with a little bit of mustard. This is not for flavor, this is just to help our spice mixture bind to the ribs. So I'm just gonna put it on, it's a very light coat, and then I'm gonna change my gloves, because as always, food safety matters. So my first layer of seasoning is just some pink Himalayan sea salt. We've got quite a bit of ribs here, and I wanna make sure that they are thoroughly seasoned before we apply this rub. So if you notice, I'm putting it on both sides of the ribs and I'm patting it in there. I am going heavy. I want these ribs to be coated with that seasoning. So I'm gonna season the back, the front. I'm gonna rub it in there and then I'm even gonna hit the sides of the ribs as well because I don't want a spot to be devoid of flavor anywhere on these ribs giving it a little bit of smell. They smelled fantastic. So I'll let these hang out on my counter and then we're gonna head out to my favorite cooking implement, my Traeger grill. So here I've got it rolling at about 225 degrees and I'm gonna set these ribs on there. I'm paying careful attention to how I'm laying them because however you lay them is exactly how they're gonna finish cooking. So I'm gonna line my bones up, make sure that they're nice and straight and once they're looking good, I'm gonna close this lid and I'm not gonna open it for about an hour and a half. We're gonna go inside and we're gonna start prepping our basting mixture. So into a food safe container, I'm gonna start off by putting in some of that rub that we put on the outside of those ribs. Along with that, I'm gonna add some apple cider vinegar, the unfiltered kind, with a little bit of water. Once I got all of those in there, I'm gonna shake it up. And then after that first hour and a half of cooking, I'm gonna baste these guys every 45 minutes until they're done. About a total of five hours of cooking time. So you'll notice that once I got out here, the basting mixture magically changed to a measuring cup with a brush. And that is because the spice mixture did not move through the squirt bottle. Anyways, we live and we learn. But as you can see with these ribs, they are getting an absolutely gorgeous color from that paprika that we used in the rub. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of a coat on this every 45 minutes when I come out here. These are gonna help keep them moist. The vinegar is gonna add a little bit of tang. And these ribs are just gonna be amazing. So after about five hours, I was ready to pull my ribs and they look delicious beautiful dark mahogany color. You can see that the meat is starting to pull back from the bones. These ribs came out fantastic. I was really pleased. 
Flipping these guys over, you can see that the meat started to pull back from the bones as well. That's a good indication that you've cooked your ribs. When I slice mine up, I like to flip it over to the back side, and that way I can see the bones and I'm not trying to saw through a piece of bone. But as I started pushing my knife through these ribs, it was just falling off the bone tender. Just amazing. Now the last thing I like to do with my ribs is I come back with a little bit of that dry rub that we started off with, and I love to dust them at the end. And then finally, I gotta give it a little bit of a taste test. I couldn't wait any longer. So I took a big old bite and that whole piece of meat came off the bone. It was so tender, so delicious. Just a recipe you wanna make again and again. I hope you guys enjoyed this edition of Coach Sean's Kitchen. I look forward to seeing you guys back here again. Enjoy.